Hey, I'm Amber Jalink, and today we're going to talk about some creative ways to make your low content books more interesting. In case you don't know me, I've been working online full time since 1997, uh, and I've been working a lot with journals and planners, coloring and activity books for more than eight years. If you find this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel as I'll be releasing more tutorials in the coming weeks and months to help you build your low content product business. So if you've seen various fun books such as comic books and even if you don't want to create comic books, you might like to have some fun with some of the layouts that, uh, that there are. Well, to be honest, the possibilities of these types of products are actually endless. You might be wondering how comic book templates can help you in your business. Well, the interesting thing about these is they aren't just for comic books. Realistically, what I'm going to talk about are the comic book layouts. Sometimes they're also called storyboards, which you can use for so many things. You can create blank comic books for kids and adults to fill out on their own. You can create actual comic books if you're really good at these kind of stories and illustrations. You can create printables from these. You could use comic book layouts for greeting cards and fun signs. You could even use these to create activity books, journals, planners, and more. You could use these layouts to create fun fact type books, humor and joke books, or even daily feelings and gratitude journals. Kids stories are always popular, but sometimes people struggle with the layouts. Why not create a kid's story using one of the fun layouts? You could even use these layouts as a basis for travel games, you know, such as the would you rather style games for both kids and adults. The possibilities are almost endless. The question is, how do you create fun and funky layouts? A lot of people use Canva. I personally prefer Microsoft PowerPoint as it's far more potential uh, as a software program than just pr presentations. And a lot of people think it's only for presentations. I'm here to tell you there's way more you can do. So today I'm going to show you how to create uh, some fun templates using PowerPoint. It isn't difficult, but if even if you choose to use something other than PowerPoint, you'll see that this should give you a lot of ideas. All right, so first we're going to start with uh, opening up PowerPoint and start with a blank presentation. So you click File New, Blank Presentation. Now the first thing we want to do is make this into a size that's printable. So we're going to just, uh, the simplest thing to work with for now, because we're not doing this in presentation mode, is to highlight these boxes and delete them. Just click on it and you can hit the delete button. Now we're going to hit design and we're going to go across to slide size. You're going to say custom slide size. You're going to change it to portrait and you're going to change it to letter paper. Now you can also change this to custom. It's kind of very much the same type of thing because we're going to adjust the measurement anyways. So let's just put it at uh, custom. We'll put it down to, we want eight by inch, eight by 10 inches. Okay. And say, okay. And I just say maximize. Now I like to leave the guides on. You can turn them off yourself by going to view and you can turn on the guides. I like to do that because it shows me the four quadrants of the page. The other part of that is if you really want to use the guidelines, you can use them. I don't worry about the guidelines myself too often, but they are handy if you want to specifically, you know, line up a portion of the page. So we're going to start with a very simple one and it's just going to be a uh, box. So you're going to see how it turns out. So first we're going to go to insert and shape. Now, right now I'm just starting with the rectangle shapes. We'll talk about some of the other ones in just a few minutes. Uh, but this is just to be straightforward and simple. So we're going to just draw the shape here and I'm going to, I just put a few drawn like this. Okay. Now go up to the top and change the color. If you want to leave it at the same default color, you can, but that doesn't make sense for comic books personally. So our storyboard layouts in any way. So I would turn it to black and white. Or if you really want to, you could change it to um, transparent by just scrolling down here. You can see that it's also transparent. I just use black and white. Uh, so now if you want to, you can either draw it again or you can right click on it, hit copy, and hit paste. 
You're gonna to wanna to line this up. Now remember, we're not using page margins here. So this is actually eight inches. So when this, if you put this on an eight and a half by 11 page or an A4 page, you're gonna have a little bit, slightly more of a margin, which is okay for binding if you end up publishing the book. So if you want them as printables, then it will just fit perfectly on a page. All right, so now we're gonna make this one just a little bit of a wider rectangle. Now let's, we're going to, I'm gonna show you how to copy. I'm gonna replicate this so that there's two of them, but in the other direction. The simple way is obviously highlight, right click and hit copy and paste it again. And now we drag it and move it down to underneath. Now when you do this, you will see, I'm just gonna lower it so you can see this if you haven't had experience with PowerPoint. When you drag it across, you can see that it had this little red line. I can't use show the mouse, but when you look here, when I move it, if it shows the red line, that means it's lined up to this box, which is what you want ideally on the edges anyways. So now you wanna keep a certain, just a small amount of space. And we're gonna make this a little bit shorter. Now we're gonna take this one, copy it, right click and paste. If you're using a different uh, computer, like a, a MacBook, your buttons might be a little different. So I'm just talking as if you're using Windows. <laughs> uh, so just shrink that. So now you have opposite sides. And now the other way to do this, I was gonna show you is if you take your mouse up to the top corner Hold your button down, your left button, and with your mouse ball, just drag it across. It doesn't matter if you go part way over these, it's only gonna highlight the two top ones. You have to make sure that you go completely outside of them. And as you can see, it has highlighted them both at the same time. You can right click, you can hit copy, right click and hit paste, and you can see that it put them together. Now we're going to have to resize them. So let's bring them down to being in level and we'll shrink them. And because they're still connected, we're shrinking them together, which is perfect. Okay. So you can leave this as a storyboard right there. Or if you want to, let's shrink this one. We'll shrink this one a little bit more. Right click and copy and paste. And now we can make this your center. And again, now you saw how this, again, the right, you see the red, sorry, uh, little arrows. If you look at the screen, um, you might have to make this video full screen to see it, but you should see it when you're doing it yourself. You'll see, and it shows you the even. If they're not appearing, that means they're not even. So as you can see, I have it even at the bottom, but not at the top. And then uh, just shifting it slightly and it makes it the same balance from here. Now I'm just gonna make it a little bit wider so that this bottom one is wider. All right, there you go. There's a storyboard right there. And if you wanna see what it looks like, hit view, turn the guides off, and you can see exactly how it would print. So now this is really quick and simple, and you can see that. Now I wanna show you what happens if you wanna start changing some of the layout. So I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. What we're gonna do first, so that it keeps it simple, is I'm gonna take this page over on the left side. I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna say duplicate slide so that we have the same one to work with, okay? This is where we're gonna get funky and we're gonna start, I'm gonna show you how to make different shade shapes with some of this. And then I'm gonna show you how to modify an existing shape. So we're gonna replicate this twice, duplicate slide. All right, let's start with page two. So page one is just exactly as you see it. Page two, let us just highlight everything and start from scratch. So instead of hitting a um, rectangle now, if you scroll down to, move your mouse, sorry, sorry <laughs> down, you can see the different shapes, okay? You can choose which one you want to do. There's flowchart shapes or there's typically your basic shapes, which are triangles. There's a right angle, um, parallelogram, and this one is a trapezoid. And this is actually used quite often if in the comic books. And I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to use it. So let's draw one out here. 
but we don't want it to go in this direction. So let's first do the black and white. And now what we're going to do is when you've clicked on it, if it's not appearing, if you don't have your format tab open, click on the format tab and you're going to see uh, rotate. You can have it rotate sideways or up and down. And that's the one we're going to do right now. Okay, so we want this to be um, actually, yeah, we'll leave it like this. Now let's put this into the middle. Right click, copy, we're going to paste, but now we want to reverse this so that it's the opposite direction. Okay, so you can see that. We're going to format, rotate, and now we're going to flip it vertical so that it's the opposite direction. Well, now you can put them side by side. And as you can see that, they have uh, the different shapes going side by side connecting right there. What happens if you want to make this straight so that it goes up at the edge, right? So we're going to turn this again, rotate, right. Sometimes you have to rotate. I find that you have to rotate them twice. So once you've got it to the right position, then you're going to want to rotate it again. Because for example, I'm going to show you here when I insert a shape, I'm going to choose the same shape. Okay, did you see what happened here? This is going in um, kind of funky here, you know, the way it's supposed to be. But if you go turning it like this, it doesn't always work with what you want. Okay, and so sometimes you have to multiple flips. That's what I found. Now, I'm going to turn around and make this straight. Let's start over here. I'm going to, I don't want to just do it. I want to show you what I'm doing here. So let's get rid of this here. We want it to be, you can use this if you want to by turning it, but that's great for angles. It doesn't do what we want it to do. If you want it to have like a squared around frame kind of thing, right? So we are going to insert just a rectangle right here. Make sure we've got the line, guides lined up. You can move this up. Set this to black and white. Now. In order to make this do what I want, I'm going to rotate it again so that I have my edges along the right hand side. Now I want to go up to here, but then there's a space here. Now, so this is the thing, when you're doing comic books, you don't have to keep the layouts exactly um, perfectly straight. Everybody thinks you do, you don't, okay? So what I wanna show you here, this is great if you're gonna do a background um, page, let's just delete this one for a moment. If you wanna do a background color on the page, then it doesn't matter really what the shapes are going to be, okay? Or if anybody's gonna to wanna to color them in. But if you have the shape and you want it to conform, then you have to uh, adjust the shape itself. So we are going to, I'm gonna just fill the page a couple of times and then I'm gonna show you how to move things and adjust them. So let's just add another one here. We're gonna add another one down here and make it smaller. And now let's take these, drop them down, and we'll create one more. But this one's going to be, actually, let's put this here. And we're gonna turn this one and flip it. So notice the, my format tab is not highlighted. The way to do it, again, tap on it or don't click the, the shape and it'll come over to the fa uh, format. Hit rotate and we want to flip it horizontal. So now, as you can see, it pretty much matches up, right? Which is good if that's what you want to do. But now you have the space here. What happens if you want something here? Well, you could turn around and do the insert the right triangle. 
it does do that, but this is where you have the gaps. So highlight a little bit more. Let's go up, turn it to black and white. And now let's watch. You're going to go up to edit shape and you're going to hit edit points. And now we want to turn it like this. Now you see what happens when you do that with a triangle is it doesn't really work because it doesn't create the square. So where this is when I turn around and I hit, uh, we'll do the undo key. And now I'm going to turn around and take this shape here and I'm going to edit its points. So double click it, hit edit shape, edit points. And we're going to just take this one here and drag it down. Okay. You're not going to always have perfectly straight lines. Just know that when it comes to doing these type of things. But now you have it so that it's lined right up. And it just took it a little bit further. See, when you go and spread it uh, with by dragging the points, it doesn't always match up, right? If I was to do that down here without changing those points, it wouldn't have matched up. So now what happens if I wanted to put something up here? Do I want this or do I want to just make this one a different shape? Let's just change the shape by double clicking on it. Hit edit shape, edit points, drag it up. And now you essentially have a rectangle that just has a different shape on the bottom. And now you can do the exact same things with these. If you want to take this rectangle, edit the shape, edit the points. And let's say I just wanted to put the bottom turned in to match this. All I did was drag the points. Now let's see this one. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to stretch it. So I'm leaving the bottom straight, but as you can see, I'm changing the top. So now you have a funky new layout. It's literally that easy. Now the other thing you can do, and I did do this page is if you want to, um, the other way to make, so these were pretty simple and straightforward, right? You can just turn these into multiple things. So let's do that with this one. We are going to, I'm going to shrink everything just for a minute because I want to move it over and I want to add another whole section to it. And I'm going to move this one up here. So we keep this one as a long one. And we're going to make this one a little shorter. All right. So get into the sizing approximately. And this is where it's fun. You can just constantly change all these layouts. And what I would suggest is you can either do them in all in the same document or what I like to do is I actually just create separate documents and I just save as, save it save as, do my work and save it. And then I just keep creating new ones from there. So I am going to push this in. So I have an idea here and I'm going to drag this down. So it's kind of in the middle of the two, put this up. No, it doesn't quite fit, but that's okay. It doesn't have to go across because you're going to see what I'm going to do here. So this one here, I'm going to hit edit the points. I'm going to drag this a little bit over. So now it went over to that page, but that's okay because we're going to fix that too. And then I'm going to pull it in at the bottom. This one, I'm going to have it edit the shape. I'm going to leave it so that it's kind of connected to that still. But we'll just pull this just slightly narrower. Okay, now I have to change this one. Okay, so you make sure you're highlighting to this correct one. As you can see, I'm going to say edit points. And now this one's going to go in just a little bit. And this one, let's actually, let's turn this one in points this way as well. And we can just uh, make it just slightly straight, but not quite. Now this one needs to be adjusted. So we can actually pull it back to just a little bit so that the bottom connect is close. 
But now we have to hit Edit Shape, Edit the Points, and we're going to want to pull it to there. And we'll put it down just a little bit because it got lifted up. Okay, so there's your little three. Now, I had this drawn out ahead of time on paper, so that's why I'm looking down at it. We want to change this one. And I'm going to do edit the points. And I'm going to draw this one out like this. Okay. And now if you've noticed, I tapped in the center and I can actually, or clicked in the center, I can actually make this a little bit rounded if I wanted to. I'm not too worried about doing that. Uh, it's good if you want to get funky with that. Um, just put a little bit of a curve in there if you want to. That's okay. Now we're going to put this one over here. And it's got to be lined up. Edit the shape. Edit your points. Take it across so that it's connected close to the bottom. And let's put this one above. Which now means I have to adjust this one, but that's okay. That is the fun. Why I'm showing you this is for that reason. I want you to see the fun that you can have with these different shapes. So I'm taking a straight rectangle and I'm turning it into some of these other shapes. Now this one here, we're going to go across. What's funny is when you start looking at it, it's almost like an optical illusion because you start to, uh, your eyes start to see, is it straight or is it not? <laughs> All right, let's go up here, edit the points. Drag it across, put it up here. I just leave maybe a little bit more space. There you go. That's a brand new uh, design that you can just turn around and play with. Now, if you wanted to fill them in, um, I'm going to suggest you just go to somewhere like Pixabay. You can get tons of free, um, lots of free backgrounds that you can use there. Just make sure that it's something that you have license to use. Um, but when you create these for comic books, uh, you can literally create comic book layout books that people will buy. And uh, just to have uh, the concept of, you know, kids can draw, color, whatever. But you can use these for all those, like I said, the joke thing, the joke books, the um, even a journal or a planner, just to be different. Like people like to, um, a lot of people like bullet journals because they draw their own things. This totally lays into the ability to do that because you can um, you can pre-design these for somebody and they can turn around and say, hey, you know, I can put a gratitude section here. I can put a what did I do today? Uh, you know, any of that type of thing. The other thing you can do with these is if you really wanted to, uh, you can totally change the shape and all you have to do is double click on it. You can say edit shape. Now what happens if I wanted to do like some sort of a starburst? If I just click to the starburst, see how it says stars and banners? You have to get familiar with your shapes. That's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, when you put your mouse over it, it'll tell you exactly what they are. Flow chart, uh, this is the process. Uh, your basic shapes, of course, like I said, there's different shapes here, like a teardrop kind of a thing or an oval. Um, but if you want to do a starburst, there, I just changed it into a starburst. So this is kind of like a comic thing for sure. You drag it over and just make it whatever size you want. And there you created something else yet again. <laughs> so this is where people do the pow and boom and whatever type of things you can do thinking clouds by doing insert shapes and go down to the um, thinking cloud and then just also draw it black and white and because you've done it now on top it's sitting on the top if you wanted to put um, let's say you wanted to have it like this but you wanted this box here to actually be in front of it you have to right click and choose bring to front and as you can see, you've lost part of the cloud. And you've also lost part of the starburst. If you want it, the others to come back, you just say send to back. Okay, and then these two come up front. So that's literally all it is to creating these. Uh, now I will suggest one other thing. You're gonna wanna hit, um, make sure that your um, options are set uh, to export, if you export this as a PNG, 
you want to make sure you have the quality. To do that, you hit, hit the options, like I said, hit advanced, and now you're set default. Um, and this is where it's, it annoys me because I have to change it every single time, and it shouldn't because of the fact that I actually have set this as a default, but it doesn't stay. So when you go into your save, you have to see the image equality, size and quality. Set your default target to 330 PPI. It's very similar to 300 DPI. The 220 is acceptable for print. Uh, 330 is better. So the 220 is okay if you had to. Um, and I've done it that way. Sometimes it does print out that way. Sometimes I forget to change it. Uh, but it's very easy to fix. And just set it to 330 and then say okay. And that's it. And so when you save, have your images saved, then it'll um, save it with the, with the proper DPI which is good for printing. So anyways, I hope you have found this helpful to you. Hit the subscribe button and uh, you'll get notified the next time I make a new video, which shouldn't be too far from now.